So let's look at them in a bit more detail. We'll take halogenation first. Uh, recall that in alkanes, substitution um, re with halogens required UV light, which is high energy light, or high temperatures in order to start the reaction. In contrast, alkenes are able to react with halogens at room temperature. Uh, and here's a couple of examples. So let's first try 1-butene plus chlorine. Uh, the double bond is going to be broken and each carbon is then able to make a new bond and these will join onto the chlorine atoms. So I'll draw out the hydrogens that were already on the molecule and the new part of the molecule is the two new chlorine atoms. We'll learn how to name these molecules properly in the next lecture, but you may be able to have a good guess at how it works if I tell you that the name of this particular molecule is 1,2-dichlorobutane. All right, how about, how about 2-butene plus bromine? So let's draw that out. And the result will be, with the new atoms, a bromine on each of the carbons that originally had the double bond attached to it. And you may be able to guess that the name of this molecule is 2,3-dibromobutane. Okay, now this reaction turns out to be really useful, um, and I'm going to take a short but important detour to explain why. So the ease with which halogenation occurs with alkenes provides another way to distinguish the visually identical alkanes and alkenes. And this is a more convenient and more reliable method than seeing which of them produces a smokier flame. As we said on the last slide, alkenes will react with halogens easily at room temperature, whereas to make alkanes react with halogens, you need to expose them to UV light or high temperatures. And this leads to the decolorization of bromine test. Uh, bromine water is an aqueous solution of bromine and it has the characteristic brown colour of bromine. So when bromine water is added to an alkene, the less dense non-polar alkene floats on top of the bromine water, it doesn't mix with it. But if you shake the test tube to temporarily mix the two liquids, the brown colour will disappear from the water as the bromine dissolved in it, sorry, as the bromine that's dissolved in the water reacts with the alkene molecules. Now it's worth noting that an alkyne will also give a positive result in this test since alkynes are also able to undergo halogenation. So what a colour change in this test signifies is the presence of double or triple bonds in the molecule. So really it's a test for unsaturation. It's a test for molecules that have uh, double or triple bonds in them. In contrast, if bromine water is added to an alkane at room temperature, no colour change occurs because there is insufficient activation energy to cause the substitution to occur. So the water remains brown because the bromine is not being used up. Now we'll be doing this test as a prac this week and you'll see how it works. And there's an example of it. So this is what it would look like if it was an alkane when no reaction has occurred and the bottom layer is the bromine water still with its colour. This is what it would look like if you had added an alkene. The brown colour has disappeared from the bromine water. Uh, and what you have in the top layer here is now a halogenoalkane instead of the original alkene. And there is another test that's used to distinguish between alkanes and alkenes. This works by a different reaction, but it is worth mentioning here because it fulfills the same function as decolorization of bromine. That is, it's a test for unsaturation. So in this test, a solution of acidified potassium permanganate, which is a deep purple colour, is added to the hydrocarbon. If the purple colour disappears and a brown, browny green precipitate forms, the hydrocarbon is an alkene or an alkyne. If not, it's an alkane. As a final note, while these two tests are generally used to detect unsaturation, that is double or triple bonds, they give a negative result, that is no colour change, with aromatic compounds, despite the fact that aromatic compounds have double bonds in them. This is because the characteristic feature of those alternating single and double bonds that aromatic uh, compounds have gives them a particular stability, which means that they don't react as easily as ordinary alkanes. So you can submit an aromatic compound to the bromine test or the permanganate test and they will behave as if they were an alkane.